Welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this occasion we need to talk about the Goov delay. On Studio One you have different versions of delays, you have the analog one, the beat one, well the Goov is about taps. And you also have a filter and modulation section on this delay. Okay, so I'm going to be using an impact with a tiny little sound which is going to be a rim shot which is something super short so we can hear the repetitions when we uh, use the delay. And I know that all of this just looks a little bit challenging. We can narrow this down. So uh, this comes with a filter and modulation. Uh, if I remove the filters, they are just, you know, out of the way and I can even hide the controls. So now it's just, you know, just the taps. Now the taps are just four different types, four different delays uh, in a on the chain. So if I go all the way down on the delay and I reset the panning, I go all the way down level and all the way down the feedback, you know, I go down on this, down on this, I just reset everything with control and click. We just have one single tap. We need to learn one tap and once we know one, we know the rest. All right, so most of the controls that you have right here, you can control them with the taps that you have at the top and just dragging the controls. That's the main point. I'm gonna reset back to uh, the number one. So now it's on. The most important, I wanna say most, but it's super important, is gonna be this section that you have right here. Because by default, this will sync, this de delay will sync to whatever you have as a BPM on your session. It's going to be, and you need to hover this, it's going to say beat length uh, and then half. So when I play it, notice that we hear the tap. So it's super slow. Now if I go to the next one, this one will affect the tempo. So you have a different division. It's going to be much faster. If I go to the other one, we have more, and then we have more and more. Ooh, and more. Now, of course, since I go to this, we only have four different places where we can put this delay. And this is about the position. Since we have four, I can put it here, or the first one, second one, third, or fourth. And of course, this will affect when the tap plays. If I go to the other ones, now we have more positions to allocate this tap. And the same thing is going to happen with the other taps. That's, you know, the whole point. Now, in this case, I'm just going to stay on the first one and go to the first position. Besides altering the position of the tap, you can go to this section and you can offset to dot it or you can offset to triolic, which is, you know, you're offsetting for from the uh, offsetting the tap right from the grid, right from the, uh, you know, the pocket. So when you when you have more taps, and I'm going to give you an example right now, this is going to be super useful because maybe the second tap is going to be on the two, the third tap is going to be on the th three and then the fourth one is going to be on the fourth and for now i'm just going to go here to the position and get this so we have one two three and four and it's pretty boring but with this control you can offset this just a tiny little bit and now it's going to be you know a little bit more fun so you have you're going to have different a different type of sound maybe i'm going to go here just you know you have a different type of rhythm and that's the whole point of a you know a tap delay now let me just reset back the positions and all the way down because we need to learn the rest of the controls and then you have the feedback now the feedback feedback of course is how many repetitions you want you want to get if i go here we have more repetitions i can go all the way up and we're gonna get more and more still notice that it's just not going crazy and it's because we are using this global feedback. So think of this as the scalar of the feedback of all the different taps. If it's on 40%, even if you go on the, uh, on the uh, to 100%, you will not hear that self-feedback, that constant self-feedback. You will need to scale this up in order to get that self-feedback. And now we get it, right? Now, why do we get this? Well, let's say that I do something like that. And then, you know, we have the other ones and we have uh, maybe feedback like this. So if we are go to, we go to defaults, this is the, the position for all the controls of all the tabs of all the feedbacks. So if we want to scale down all of them, we're going to need to manually go to every single feedback control and go down, but we don't need to. That's why we have the global feedback. We can scale them down all at once or scale them up all at once. And that's it pretty much. It wasn't that hard. It's because, you know, we have a lot of controls and a lot of knobs and it, uh, you know, it looks, um, it looks complex, but it's just really not. 
Now at the top, you can control the level with just clicking the uh, the tab and just moving it. Uh, the position, you can change the position manually and then change the level from here. But you can also do panning. If I go here, I can do go to the left or go to the right. And remember, uh, control and then click on the control is going to reset back to the uh, default position. And if you go to, and then you have this swing. And for the swing, you know, I'm going to need a little bit of level for all the different taps. I'm going to go here. And this one is going to be on the second, this on the third, and this on the fourth. When you go to the swing, what you can do is take the one, the one, the tap number one, and the tap number three, and you can go down a level, you can go up, but you can also shift it forwards. With, now with the two and the four, you cannot move it. Not forwards, not backwards. You can only go down in level. And of course, this will give you that, you know, uh, swing that you want. Maybe I'm going to go a little bit faster and a little bit of feedback on all the controls. And yeah, you, know, you get that, that swing, mo swing type of motion. Now, notice that you have a lock right here. So when you do this, what you're pretty much doing is you're locking the mix level. So when you go to different patches, the mix will always stay the same. Why is this important? Well, maybe you're using this on a bus, you're sending to a bus, and you will need to have a mix uh, of uh, completely wet. So you can lock this, and if you go to patches, it will keep, keep that 100% mix. This is, you know, usually why you get uh, the mix lock on any given plugin. And OK, back to default, and now we need to discuss the filter, the section at the bottom. Instead of using uh, impact, I'm using my tie, which is the synthesizer from Studio One. So if I play it, this is going to be a dumb note. I'm going to turn this off so you can. This is the sound from the synthesizer, and I know it's boring, and it, you know it's in purpose. So when I play, you now we get this. What I want to do, I want to get the taps out of the way. I'm going to reset everything back to nothing. You know, we can go down a level, but I'm just going all the way down so we don't get distracted with the colors that we have right here. Then I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, and we're going to work only with the first filter. Now, this filter is a variable type of filter. You can control it with the X, Y uh, type of control. And when you move it, it will tell you how much of what you're doing. Uh, low pass 63%, high pass uh, 37 and then band pass, of course, because right here in the center you have band, and if you go here, it's low pass, then low pass peak, then high pass, and band pass. The thing is that, again, when you move these controls, you can change uh, the filter, and it will, of course, alter whatever it is that you're trying to delay and the feedback that you get. I'm gonna maybe go here. You know what? I'm gonna make it faster. So I'm gonna play something. And we get that. Maybe I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, feedback. There we go. So now, since we are using the filter, if I change the cutoff, we are changing or cutting whatever it is that we are doing, you know, with the filter. Now, this position really matters because right now it's at band pass. But if I go here, it's going to be a more traditional low pass filter. And if I go, you know, to mix all the way up, that is that we can hear there are only the repetitions. And if I go to the other side, it's going to be the opposite. We are high passing. You also, of course, get a resonance control because it's a filter. If I move this, we can, you know, get that sweep. If I keep playing it, Notice that sound will change. That's the main point of this. Now, of course, this is a filter, and you can modulate the filter with an LFO. And that's why it says cutoff LFO. You can modulate the LFO, this cutoff, I'm sorry, the cutoff, with an LFO, which is, uh, I guess, is a sine wave or maybe a triangle wave. Now, the main point is that this cutoff is going to modulate up and down. And how much it modulates up and down or down and up is going to be this control. So for now, I'm just going to keep it on low pass. So uh, if I go all the way up, it's going to modulate this control up and down. You know what? I'm going to put it on the, at the top right here. So if I play it, we are going to be 
getting that modulation. We can hear it, but it's a little bit slow, right? So, right here we need to control the speed, and by default it's going to be synced. So if I go a little bit faster, now we're going to be getting that modulation. If I disable the modulation, notice it's pretty static, it's not modulating. Now we can go even faster if I wanted to, maybe a 16s. And it's way faster right now. You can unsync and do hertz if you must. And do it manually. And that's pretty much it. Now, when you go to cutoff uh, at the top, you have the controls of the cutoff. You can go uh, right here, go up and down. And then the LFO, it's going to be uh, pretty much, it's going to be the LFO amount. So right now it's all the way up, but you know, we can go into negatives and control the modulation a little bit more. Now, now maybe you're asking yourself, why do we get a filter? Well, the, the point is that you have taps. So if you maybe filter the first tap and then you filter the second tap a little bit differently, the third tap a little bit differently, and then the other one, the, the other tap, and you even maybe use different modulations, you're separating the taps. So you're gonna be getting uh, like a sound that moves. That's the whole point. Uh, maybe uh, gonna do no resonance on this, on this one, and this one is gonna be really resonant. And so on and so on and so on. That's 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 the whole point. I'm gonna be doing maybe two, go to level, doing two, gonna do I don't know four, and then on this one it's gonna be six. You know what? I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go up in level, and also by also by changing the panning of the tabs, you can you know separate the tabs a little bit more. I'm gonna go mix 50%. So now if I play it, all the tabs they sound a little bit different. I'm gonna do less feedback, almost the same feedback for all of them. And I'm gonna separate them even more. And that's, you know, the, this is the main point of having a, a tap delay and having a filter on all the different taps. Every tap sound, sounds different, so the sound is super wide and super big. And remember, my sound was this. So, yeah. Maybe, of course, it's just maybe too much, but... Now, I'm going really aggressive. <laughs> maybe it's uh, just a little bit too crazy. This is what you need to do with this type of delay. This is why you pick this type of delay. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you understood this delay. And again, like I said before, it's pretty simple once you break it down and you narrow the parts to a single tap. But well, hopefully you learned something on this video. And if you did, remember to like and subscribe.